I've said it all week long. As soon as the Titans and the Ravens were scheduled to play each other in the playoffs, and these guys can attest, I reached out to both of them on text right away because when the <laughs> NFL Network started, this is what the Titans rival Ravens rivalry was all about. It was about Eddie George, one of the few members of the 10,000 yard rushing club of his illustrious playing career and Ray Lewis pro football hall of famer from the Baltimore Ravens. Good to see you guys. And Rich. blessed to be seeing that view. <laughs> Rich, I keep telling Eddie, how many times am I going to see you this week, man? <laughs> <laughs> oh, this isn't a first? This, this isn't is a first? The first. <laughs> I, I'm tired of seeing him. I was tired of seeing him on the field. Every, everywhere I was the ball, he, number 52 was right there. And he was there to hit you with bad intentions. <laughs> Wanting to say hello, we I just, you down nicely. I just, I just knew, I just knew, I always knew if I let you get to my secondary, it wasn't gonna be good. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what it was like if you walk me through it. You know, you, you, you go first here, uh, Ray. When you knew that you were playing the Titans, because this mm -hmm. was back in the day when you saw them twice a, twice a year too. Yeah, but Rich, man, look, honestly, like me and Eddie, we do it all the time, but we, we go back even farther, right? Before they came, right? <laughs> but came Tennessee, you know? We started this rival when they was Houston, you know? And, and, and for us to start this in 1996, we met in 1995, played with Playboy All-American, Kodak All-American, and then we had this little rivalry, you know, in college, and just so happened we ended up in the same conference. So when we started going at it, man, we became really great friends, I think, at the Pro Bowl, 97, 98, when we first went to the Pro Bowl. And actually, I was getting every drink that Eddie wanted. I mean, I root for Eddie. <laughs> oh, <laughs> rich, rich. I tell this story all the time. Me and Eddie went to the Pro Bowl, and this is, people didn't even know who the Baltimore Ravens were, right? And uh, Eddie walked in to Waikiki, and they was like, oh, Eddie, Eddie. And Rich, I stood behind 400 people for three and a half hours <laughs> and <laughs> on autographs. <laughs> <laughs> and the rivalry begins, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it, it Ray's absolutely right. You know, uh, and I, I do recall we had, we, we started the competition in the backyard of, a, of an agent that was courting both of us. And uh, I started off with uh, a friendly drinking game. And you know how when you start- Smashers. Out, you see, Smashers. <laughs> oh, you Ohio State conference. game. You know, and, and then it, it led to us going in the backyard shooting paintball, trying to hit a target. And then it led into Ray talking, well, if you wasn't, he said, hey, if I saw you in college right now, I'm fresh off the Heisman. He says, man, I will snap you in half. And Ray at the time was, he had a cast on his foot and he was about 208 at the time. I'm looking at him like, boy, hey, you too light in the ass to be the big two. And that's where it all started. And I tell you what, you know, uh, Ray's absolutely right. A lot of our, our rivalry began when I was in Houston. He was in Baltimore yeah. when we did play in front of absolutely nobody. Nobody. There was six. We, the, the the COVID protocols was in place in 96 in Houston. There was nobody in there. Yeah. And it was competitive. Yeah. You know, Ray was a, a, a uh, young rookie at the time, very hungry, uh, on a Baltimore defense that was kind of complacent. And he was really changing the culture. You can sense that. Here was a team, you know, won four ball games. We played them the last game of the season, the Memorial Stadium in Baltimore. Wow. Place packed. And I'm like, this is the last game. We're not going to the playoffs. Uh, he may, he, he's going to Pro Bowl. I'm going to the Pro Bowl. Let's just get to this game and just call it a day. It's not going to... No. I mean, goal line stands. It was like as if it was for the game-winning touchdown in the Super Bowl. And it was... And as a matter of fact, that's that's where he knocked it out of me. <laughs> I'll never forget that. I came up the gut, and all of a sudden, it was... Lights out. Next thing I know, I'm coming to on the sidelines, and Steve Jackson, our defensive back, came up to He kept walking by me like, looking at me like, what happened? What happened? He says, man, you don't want to know. All I said was that Ray, before I even finished the sentence, Ray Lewis knocked your ass out. I said, no, no, no. 
and that's and that's and that's where it all began, man. And it got and it got really nasty thereafter when both of our teams became yeah. who they were at that particular time. Yeah, yeah. So it's special to watch it now. It's really special. Um, me and him talk about it all the time. Um, we talked about it last year, the year before. Every time we get ready to play each other. Yes. Uh, yeah, uh, we call it, tell them the phone and say, here we go again. Here we go again. <laughs> here we go again. Yeah. And, and before we get to the here and now, I do still just want to live in the past a little bit because, yeah. you know, again, what I said at the very top, it's true. When the NFL Network began, it was 03. And that was just after you guys were placed in different divisions right then mm -hmm. and there. But it, it was several years, two times a year, sometimes three and and the two of you guys would be the ones meeting in the hole like the number of times we're like well this quarterback against that quarterback you know but they're not on the field at the same time it really was the two of you what was the the defining moment i think for both of you guys in that battle for both of you which one you know what? do you think you it know is what? i'm gonna tell you um i know forget this rich like it, you know tennessee was always for, from 96, 97, 98, 99, we weren't good. We weren't good. So the only battle was me and Eddie for me, right? Mm -hmm. It was only me and him. And it was interesting because every time we would see each other, when we saw each other off the field, it was like, hey man, meet me at the bar. Let's hang out, right? At the Pro Bowl. And it's like, right. but then when we got on the field, it's like this switch. And we had this ultimate respect for each other, but we had this ultimate competitive spirit that said, I'm not losing to him and I'm not falling on my back, right? That was the thing, like, you know, back in the day, like you could not get ran over. That was a big thing in our neighborhoods, right? <laughs> and I'm like right. saying to myself. And so I think it started happening right in 98, 99. And I never forget it. Um, um, it and went on that run. And I think what you had 403 carries that year, something like that. Mm -hmm. And Eddie ran on this run, man, Rich. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, what in the freak is going on? Like this team is thriving and I'm calling Ozzy and I'm like, Ozzy, how is Tennessee better than us? And this is crazy. And to see Eddie take that next step, right? To go to the Super Bowl against the Rams in 99. And Eddie, I done told you this story a thousand times. And I'm sitting where I'm sitting and I see this guy pulling your helmet, getting in this end zone. <laughs> and, and this girl jumps up and she says, Eddie George is a beast. Rich, I got up at three o'clock in the morning while drinking and went to the weight room. <laughs> I said, God darn it, I got to find a way to this train, this train. And, uh, and, and I think it became, I think it became so personal. If people knew the respect we had for each other, we would meet and put it and, and bow to each other. And, and, and after the playoff losses, I mean, this guy, the respect that he, we had for each other. We, we, we beat them in Tennessee. And the first person before I see the media, before I'm halfway dressed, Eddie walks in in a white silk matrix outfit. And, and, <laughs> and, 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 I'm, and I'm like, who is this, Jesus? <laughs> and, and he walks in and he says, bruh, Man to a man, go do it, go in it. You the better man. And I'm telling you from that day, man, it was just like this brotherhood was formed and yeah. And, and, yeah. and Rich, and, and, and to our, that was that was a time like for me, cause we were, I think we were the number one seed that year going into the playoffs uh, in 2000. And you know, we knew that whoever won this game between us and Baltimore, yeah. that nobody else, the, the, the Super Bowl was that day. Yeah. We knew that. Yeah. Whoever, we were going to see the Raiders. We were going to smash them. Yeah. We knew it. It didn't matter who you put in front of us. Yeah. It was going to be lights out. That's how we were built like that. Yeah. And that loss for me was the toughest loss I've ever experienced. It was like as if somebody died in my, like in my family. The closest member to my family died because you... You, you put everything out there. It was it was very personal. There were some things said between the organizations. Yeah. We did not like each other. The head yeah. coaches did not like each other. The right. fan bases hated each other. If, if you died on the field that day, it was good riddance. Get, get, get him out of here. Yeah. It was it was no it was no love loss. Yeah. Okay, 
So, so when when Ray picked the ball off in the end, it was the defining moment because it was as if he, that's when his career really took off because of mm -hmm. all the stuff that he went through that offseason, we're not going to go into that. Yeah. To, to watch him rise above that and to become the ultimate player that he became. I mean, he, he was a man on a mission. There was nothing that was going to stop him from winning a Super Bowl that year. Here he was on the cusp of possibly his career, everything on the line. And then to watch that, to, to watch his team rally around him, not just his team, but his whole city. So to me, that was a defining moment where I watched Ray Lewis become a real man and become the Hall of Famer that he is today because he made some really choice decisions that mm -hmm. he was going to operate this way and do things his way. As a matter of fact, back in the day when you made a phone call, you used to get these voice messages and this music. And <laughs> during that time, it was... He used to have Luke prior to that or some other songs on, on the voicemail. But I called him, and it was a song called The Change Is Gonna Come. Yes, sir. And that was it. Sam Cook. And I'll never forget that. So it goes deeper than just on the field with us. Yeah. We loved each other like brothers off the field, but in between the white lines. Yeah. If I die, if he killed me that day, it was, it was okay. Well, was there a time where you, you guys were barking each other? I mean, that's the most famous one where you made on the sideline and you're just in each other's yeah. in the, in the No, but it's every play. Rich, listen, I'm telling you, I tell Ed this all the time. I'm, and I'm not exaggerating this. If you go back and you watch Ali and Frazier, if you go back and watch Sugar Ray and Hagler, if you go back and watch those classic battles, Rich, if you ever went back, and I, I told Ed this, that if we don't sit down and go back from 96 and just take me and his plays on how many times we met one-on-one -on -one in the hole. Rich, I'm telling you, I, I and he tell you this, I used to go in the weight room, my trainer will tell you, he used to say, what's on your mind this offseason? Eddie George, Eddie George, I, I don't care. I, it does not freaking matter. Like this dude it is, God darn it, I get it, I get it, right? And, and you gotta remember this, this old school football, they running the ball 42 times, right? <laughs> That's, right. <laughs> That's minimum. That's minimum, right? With a fullback, two tight ends, there's no tricks to the game. And that's why I think the respect of, because we knew what they were going to do. They were going to run the ball, right? When they got an eye formation, I'm like, here we go. And we got to dance. And so I think the respect started to happen even, even when that pick happened. They came to Baltimore earlier that year, and we lost it in 15 to 9. Ram the Goffey picked off that ball, if you remember, going into yep. the end. We lost to them 15 to 9. <clears throat> and I'll never forget coming in the, uh, in the locker room and Marvin was like, defense, I was like, Marv, I don't want to talk. Man, all the coaches get out. All the coaches get out. And, and, and I mean, Rob Wilson to tell you this story, man. I'm sitting there and I'm like, man, freak, man. How this, this, this guy, man, this freaking guy come beat us in our city. Da, 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 da. And that's when I think me watching film, Clicking, Peyton Manning, Eddie George, <clears throat> and Tom Brady was the three like people, masters of the game that made me study and take my game to another level. From a mindset, it was Eddie, I mean, it was Peyton Manning and Tom Brady. From a physical mentality of how you have to play the game, it was Eddie George. Eddie George stood 6'3", 245 pounds. Eddie George was thumping, he coming downhill. So it was, it was me saying, here we go again. And so, man, I'm telling you, me and this dude talk about this all the time, man, but mm -hmm. I don't think there's ever a greater a, a rivalry between a linebacker and a running back that we had in our careers. And, and, and crazy enough, <clears throat> definitely for the first five, six years, I mean, team-wise and what they were doing against us, he won most of those. We just had a lot of personal one-on-one -on -one battles. Ray yeah. Lewis and Eddie George here on the Rich Eisen Show. Let's turn it to the, the here and now because we just had a great chat about the old days of you two guys. And now I'm you know, sweating Ray, up in here now. He got me. He got me ready to roll. Great. I <laughs> love it. And because, and Ray, you were talking about how it was old school football. Eddie, you coming downhill and coming mm -hmm. and, and coming with 40 some odd carries a game if, or touches a game. And, and the Titans have an old school workhorse monster of a back 
who gets stronger as the game goes on. Now a two thousand yard season, back to back, yeah, rushing titles in 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 Derrick Henry, who won and done the one seeded Ravens last year, and you know the Ravens got Calais Campbell specifically, I think, for mm-hmm. this game. I mean, so uh, I'll say to you, Eddie, is how do you think this plays out? What do you think happens in this matchup this weekend? Yeah. Oh boy. Well, you know, it seemed like the roles had reversed. Um, there was a time when Baltimore had our number, and we could not figure out a way to beat them. Um, no matter what we did, we could be up in, in the fourth quarter to find a way to, to win the game. And I kind of feel the same way now that the Titans kind of had Baltimore's blueprint in terms of how to um, uh, minimize the great plays that, that Lamar Jackson has against them. Mm. Um, they allow him to get from 20 to 20, but at 20 and then in the red zone, they've, they've mastered the game plan to where they ki- they're kicking field goals versus um, versus scoring touchdowns. So defensively, I think they've, they've really figured out how to stop Baltimore, how to slow them down. It's not allow that running game to get going. J.K. Dobbins is going to be a key factor in this game. Mm-hmm. If he's able to get off, it's going to be a problem for, for Tennessee. So they got to stop the head. You understand that Lamar is going to make his plays, but they can't allow them to be consistent on first down, on first, second down with the run game. Now for Tennessee, I don't think there's a defense in the league yeah. built to stop Tennessee's run game, mm-hmm. meaning personnel-wise, unless you pull out the 2000 Ravens with Ray Lewis, Sarah Goose, and Sam Adams. Mm-hmm. That's probably the only defense <laughs> that can probably stop Derrick Henry. Uh, there's there's no there's no there's no scheme there's no body there yeah. because once they lay on you and once they the offensive line creates a new line of scrimmage you give that man 18 inches of daylight and I'm gonna talk to speak from Gail Sayers 18 inches of daylight that's all he needs he can take it 90 he can take it 56 he can take it two yards it doesn't matter and he doesn't get discouraged by taking the zero uh, zero gains the hard twos the hard threes. He's going to get a seam. He's going to take advantage of it. I don't think Baltimore can, can handle it for four quarters. Yeah. I, look, I, I'm a, and I'm a fight for him, and I'm on the Baltimore side. But I just honestly think, Rich, that Derrick Henry, to me, Derrick Henry should be the NFL's MVP. And this is just me. I, I'm, I, I, I respect the quarterback position. Only to a certain point, but what he has done from the ground, running the football, and the, and the how big he is, and the speed he has when he gets into the secondary, that second and third level. That's one of the things that people don't understand. Is <clears throat> Eddie and I told Eddie this because I told Derek Heron the same thing of his stride, right? Eddie's stride was longer when Eddie's stride, Eddie was winding back to come. Derrick Henry keeps his feet really up under him, and he's like a little scat back. So as you see, right, he never opens up his stride. So you ask me, Rich, what will happen? This this is what I think. Tennessee, interesting enough, their defense was always just tough. They were just tough. Our offense always struggled with them. If you watch Tennessee now, that's kind of died down just a little. They're not as dominant as they once were Mm. in front seven. And, 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 and how you can get to them, even from last year, even from last year. And I was just watching this game. I was telling Nelly, I was just watching the game on the network because I, I got to do some little homework on it. But I was just watching the game from the network perspective. And I'm like, wow, they don't have him. They don't have him. Wait a minute. He's gone. He's gone. So as you see, they're, even number-wise, they've dropped a lot. Baltimore, where they picked up at it, they, they become even more creative with J.K. Dobbins, right? J.K. Dobbins is a slasher. He's a quick hitter. So now you bring somebody like him mixed with Lamar Jackson, it makes it real hard to deal with him. But the biggest thing is they're getting the ball downfield, right? They have to get the ball downfield. That's where Tennessee has the advantages with A.J. Brown on the other side. I think think A.J. Brown is in the same category as Julio Jones, D.K. Metcalf, all of those guys, right? He is a problem one-on-one. So how do I think this plays out, honestly? And this almost goes back to our style of football, Eddie. The last team with the ball wins, you know, the team. Yeah. And, and, and a lot of people say, oh, man, I, I hate cliche as football. I hate when people cliche me with football, right? Take the points that you need to take because every point in this game going to matter. Yep. 
There's no fourth downs. There, there's no, oh, I'm, no, I'm not going to take the three. Take the three. And I think Baltimore, this is just me personally, I think from what Baltimore has offensively, what Tennessee has lost defensively, I think we gain an edge, but I think where it balances out is Derrick Henry. You have to have somebody on Baltimore's side, even though you bring in Khalil Campbell, even though you bring in Wolf, you have to have a linebacker or somebody step into Derrick Henry's chest. If nobody steps into his chest, that beast gets stronger and stronger as the game go on. And that's what you don't want late, late in November. I mean, in January oh. in playoff football. What are you saying? Yeah. To, what are you saying to Lamar, Ray? I mean, th this this kid is, um, you know, dynamic, and he's zero for two now. He's one and done twice. This would be a very large win for him, and also another loss that has a whole off season of wondering what's going on. I mean, what do you talk to him about, Ray? You know, honestly, honestly, and we haven't spoken, you know, to to get into it, but you okay. know. I'm, yeah, so I haven't spoken to him to get into his head like that, you know, let him do his thing or whatever. But, you know, just from an outside perspective, Lamar is going to be Lamar. Eddie said it. Lamar is going to be Lamar. He's dynamic. He's spectacular. He's Superman. All of those things. But Lamar needs help, a lot of it, to go do what he's trying to do. And to beat Tennessee, in Tennessee, Lamar, I'm telling you, um, Hollywood Brown, uh, the, the, they, these guys downfield are going to have to be big for Lamar. They're not going to be able to sit there. And a lot of these routes, sometimes route, right? The only deep man that's going right, that's going deep is Hollywood Brown. If you study them enough, nobody threatens or from the Baltimore side. We don't threaten a lot of people, right? People aren't afraid of our pass game, right? We don't have a Devontae Adams. We don't have a DK Metcalf. We don't have an AJ Brown. We don't have a person that you have to double. So now they're stacking the box, right? So now Lamar has to tell somebody else or the scheme, Greg Roman, the scheme has to get somebody open downfield so it doesn't always have to be a long eight, nine play drive. Yeah. So um, before I let you guys go here, um, you want to chime in on the topic du jour of the week about Sunday night football, the way it ended? And... Um, you know, because this whole conversation has been about competition, no matter what. You guys were talking about your your careers, and uh, early on, you're playing in front of nobody, but it didn't matter to you. So, what do you guys, Eddie? You go first. What do you think of the way Sunday Night Football went? Down? Um, well, honestly, you know, I, I didn't have a chance to watch all of it, but just listening to what happened, um, how Philadelphia sat some guys down and kind of gave the game away, and, and you know, listen, you know. A coach has has opportunity to do whatever the hell he wants to do, yeah. you know. Um, you don't owe anything to anybody. I mean, he gains nothing by uh, winning that game and getting Washington to the playoffs or or the Giants. I mean, you got to focus on your building was in between your walls. Yeah. So if he decided to say, "Hey, you know what? I've seen enough out of Jalen Hurts. I'm gonna see some other guys, give them a look," then so be it. If the Giants wanted to make the playoffs and damn it, they should have won the games. They should have won. That's, that's how I look at it. I mean, it's don't, I'm not going to say, Oh, uh, Philly, all oh, y'all laid down so we can't get in. I mean, you, you getting in on up a six game, six and nine or seven and nine. I mean, that's not, that's not, that's not an attitude of excellence. And if as an organization, if I'm the head coach of, of the New York giants, if I'm bitching about that, then I have to question the competitive nature of my head coach in terms of, Wow. You know, are we really going to complain about how Philly didn't let us in the, into the playoffs when I should be saying, you know what, we were on the verge. This is not the product that I want to see on the field next year. Let's get to work. I mean, end of story. So I'm not, I'm not buying all of that. You know, if you, if you wanted to get in the playoffs, you should have won the games. You should you, to, to get in. That was necessary to get in. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not, yeah. I learned that early. I learned that early. <laughs> 99, we were sitting there waiting for somebody to lose. And I never <laughs> did the raw was, and I said, man, I don't like this feeling. This is horrible. <laughs> like, you're sitting there waiting for somebody to lose. And Eddie said it best, like, seriously, like, Judd, if, if you're the Giants, man, win more games. Like, the, like you're going through, everybody's going through this, the, the, what they're going through. But, you know, now, from the Philly side, I'm going to tell you this. One. Yeah, this tell me about that one. Yeah. yeah, and this from a defensive perspective. From a defensive perspective, Rich, every time I put my pads on, I put That's my right. pads on to win the game. 
I don't put my pads on to experiment. You experiment, <laughs> it's freaking preseason. That's when you experiment. You don't experiment with, oh, I want to try somebody and see what he looks like when my defense has given everything they got even with all of the players that was out on that defense. See, and this is where, and I'm telling you this, this is where on the field leadership is That's not right. around. Because on the field leadership goes to him and said, you get out there then. If you want to experiment, you go hit somebody. Because what I'm doing, you don't appreciate. That's Philly. That is the Philadelphia Eagles. That is the, that's, man, that's Mount Rushmore's of football heavens. You can't play, you can't, you can't um, evaluate somebody in that sense of a game. Why? Because if you take all of those guys in Philly, in Philly and Jalen Hurts, this young kid, the only reason you was in that game was because of Jalen Hurts. You get on, you get on the goal line and it's fourth down. You know how hard it is. Coaches make, uh, uh, players make plays. Coaches make decisions and decisions determines outcomes of games. It'll never change. You don't ever take points off the board, Rich, ever. Not even in preseason. Not if you got somehow on the other side who scrap up, they scrap up and die for this game. Rich, I die for this game. And you're not going to tell me. That's like, that's like one of my coaches telling me, oh, Ray, we're going to play a quarterback we, you know, we really don't know that much about. But, you know, y'all keep playing. Really? That's a problem. That's why on the field leadership is crucial. And that's why I challenge a lot of kids and a lot of young men Become a student of the game so you can have conversations with your coordinators and your head coaches instead of just listening to everything they say. Because if you had enough leadership, I don't care who it is. I don't care if it's Wentz. I don't care who it is. If you can knock Washington out of the playoffs, you savage your season. You save your season. You, you, you send your team out on a high instead of going out on this, oh, what are we doing now? Right now, the whole city of Philly is questioning this. Man, Philly is too rich in football. It's too rich in football to let that go down the way it down. And I'm a fan of Jalen Hurts, and no matter how many mistakes he made, he's a youngster. He's going to make mistakes the rest of his career. But that young kid has something special from Alabama. Everywhere he went, Oklahoma, everywhere he went, he's a winner. And people love to see him win. That guy, that other kid get in there and throw the pick. That other kid get in there and fumble the, fumble the ball. Really? Really? So yeah, man. Look, play the game the game the way the game's supposed to be played, and that is give it everything you got and put the best men on the field. That's what me and Eddie George came up in. The best men gonna play. It's not an experiment no more once preseason is over. Yeah, you guys, the best. I appreciate taking the time, Ray. Absolutely. Eddie, I appreciate Absolutely. it. You be well. Happy New Year to you and your families. Enjoy the games, and let's let's chat uh, maybe later on in the, the the month before the Super Bowl. We'll talk. Let's we'll do it, see. yes, sir. You got it. Let's you do it, buddy. It. All right, Rich. Take care. Right. Hey, Rich, thank you, man. Ray, love you, man. And love you, man. See you uh, Friday. Yep, right. I'm seeing you Friday again. All right, brother. Love all you, man. Right. Yep. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.